Welcome back, everyone. Uh, thank you for, uh, for turning out on such a wet and dreary Sunday morning. Hopefully, uh, what will happen in this room uh, will brighten up your day today. Um, so, <laughs> just a kind of quick recap of uh, so yesterday we looked through all of the, uh, the different op options and kind of supporting and um, enabling uh, mechanisms um, uh, that can contribute towards our aim as an assembly of um, reducing congestion, improving air quality and providing better public transport in Greater Cambridge. So today is where all of the hard work from the past kind of, well, three days um, kind of culminates in actually making some decisions and recommendations around what should happen. So uh, we're going to have a, uh, a quick recap in a bit from, from Lynn. She's going to clarify a few points. She's going to uh, remind us of, of some things that have, uh, have come up in, in previous conversations. Uh, we're then going to uh, explore the different measures and uh, how they might be combined. So, so far we've kind of dealt with them in isolation. We've thought about their pros and the cons and the considerations. But as, we, uh, as we heard yesterday, this is about kind of a set of ingredients that uh, need to come together um, because they, they all perform kind of slightly different functions, have their different kind of pros and cons. So we need to start to think about how, actually how they might work together. So, uh, so this morning, the, the, I guess the first kind of proper session uh, on your tables will be looking at the different options, kind of considering um, the, how they might kind of be, be fitted together, the ones that you like and the ones that you don't like, and actually kind of what combinations um, you might be able to, to come up with. And essentially, that's a bit of a dry run for when it comes to the, the votes, which will happen after that. So that's your opportunity as a table just to be thinking about actually when it comes down to, uh, to voting on the these, um, and kind of thinking about what my individual preference is, uh, kind of exploring that with your table and helping, to, um, helping you to think through that. So then we'll come on to the, um, the votes on the different kind of core measures. And um, as we said yesterday, it will be um, kind of uh, a combination of prioritizing them according to uh, which um, you think um, are the ones that uh, well, you, would be your preferred way of achieving the, the different outcomes that the assembly is looking at. And also kind of thinking about which ones you might support and which ones you might oppose um, as well. And we'll talk through kind of how that ballot uh, is going to happen in more detail um, later on. But that will be one of the, um, I guess, the uh, sub kind of substantial kind of outputs of the assembly, along with all of the information on kind of pros and the cons that you've already been developing and lots of the, the things that you've already developed so far. Uh, after that, they'll be looking at the additional measures that you came up with yesterday and doing a bit of a prioritization of those. So that's when we'll come to the, uh, the Mentimeter vote. Um, so if, um, if you've got uh, a phone or a tablet or, or something to, uh, to do that, uh, then great. If you haven't, if you could just let your table facilitator know so we can, uh, we can see who uh, might need some help um, with that. Uh, then... Uh, we will announce both of those uh, results, so you'll get to see kind of what the what the assem what you collectively as an assembly have agreed, and then we'll be going into actually thinking about in detail um, uh, what are the kind of key considerations and things that would need to be put in place um, for these measures to to be implemented. So essentially, kind of what are the conditions? What are the considerations that uh, need to need to um, uh, need to be part of how these uh, measures are implemented? And also, what are our key messages as, uh, as an assembly back to the the board of GCP as well? Then we're uh, towards the end of the day. We will hear from um, from the chair of the the GCP board. So we'll hear from uh, Aidan again. Um, and then, uh, then essentially we'll kind of uh, wrap things up. So that's, uh, this I guess is, is a, just another way of saying a very similar thing. So a bit of time in the morning to, to think through the different measures and how they might be fitted together before then going into the votes. Um, then looking at um, prioritising the supporting measures. Then considering the implementation and kind of key messages and considerations that you want to uh, send back to the GCP board on that, um, before then hearing from uh, from Aidan from the GCP board. So, 
few more quick things just to, um, uh, to remind you of. So we um, have our expert leads um, here today. Uh, so we have well, David, Lynn, we have Peter, we also have Isabel as well, um, who can be drawn on to, to give some, uh, some help and support to your, your tables and to answer questions. Um, we have observers and um, uh, there, there may be some press at the back of the room and uh, people from, from time to time. Ah. Same rules apply um, today as before, so they're being asked not to, uh, not to come to, to speak to you um, uh, during the breaks or, or at any time. Uh, conversation guidelines, you know these well uh, now, so I'm not going to, to run through them in detail, but they are up around the room. Please do take a, a quick read of them and uh, make sure that your, uh, um, you and your table are kind of, uh, keeping to them. Um, at the end of the day, we'll also be doing some keep in touch forms. Some of those will be for um, kind of... Uh, involved and I guess the organisers, some of it will um, be for GCP and uh, if you remember yesterday I mentioned that um, there will be an opportunity for, for some of you to, to go to present your recommendations to the GCP board so there will be, um, uh, towards the end of the day we'll be collecting um, any volunteers to do that. Um, and then um, we will be live streaming at certain parts of the day. Again, it will just be what's happening at the front, but then we also do have uh, um, somebody doing, the, um, doing some vox pops and doing some filming of the assembly uh, today, so that will be happening in the background. Uh, so conversation guidelines, as I said, I'm not going to go through these in detail, but do, um, do have a look at them. So... Um, So again, you, you kind of know the assembly question very well, but do keep referring to this and do keep referring to your vision and uh, we'll remind you of kind of what that vision is in, in a little bit. Uh, and just kind of be thinking back to, to what you've heard throughout the, the two weekends as well. So think back to the kind of weekend one speakers, kind of what, I guess, their contributions, what those might mean for, uh, for what your preferences might be. Think back to the impacts that you, you came up with, the things that you want to try to address, and the vision that you've, uh, you've come up with. These are all kind of building blocks to help you think through, actually, when we're ma making these decisions, what are we trying to achieve, and what, what do we think is the way to, uh, to reach that? So... Uh, now I'm going to go over to, to Lynn to, uh, to do a, a bit of a kind of a recap and kind of clarify a few points that have come up. Morning, morning. Thanks. <laughs> uh, okay. We heard you say at the end of yesterday that it would be nice to talk a little bit more about some of the things in the front of the booklet and what it is you might be trying to, in inverted commas, buy with some of these things that you're doing. So I just thought it would be nice to take five or ten minutes for me to talk through that in a similar way that I talked through the enablers yesterday. So we'll start with that. Annoyingly, because I'm annoying, I've put invest in cycling and walking up the top because we're hearing a lot about it and it's the last thing in your booklet and I wanted to put it up as the first thing to avoid any suggestion that it's sort of second to anything else. So there are, there's a huge package of things you can do to invest in cycling and walking safer routes across the city, safer routes to stations and to park and rides and to things that allow people from outside the city to get in. Um, things like electric bikes, secure bike storage, provision of cargo bikes. There's actually there's a, a plethora of stuff that is involved in creating a safe walking and cycling network that allows people to choose an alternative to the car that isn't public transport even. Uh, and we talked about this a lot in the first weekend, there's potential for huge public health benefits there, for well-being benefits, for creating spaces in the city that feel like nicer places to be. Uh, so lots of good stuff for that. Uh, it's a good in its own right. It also has the potential to further increase the benefit of public transport because the more you enable those good connections to public transport routes, uh, the more those public transport options can be taken up as well. Um, Worth considering that within the city itself, cycling rates are relatively high, but not that high. Uh, for people for coming from further afield into the city, the rates are understandably very much lower for lots of obvious reasons, but we heard a little bit from Gillian yesterday the potential to really invest in electric bike infrastructure and maybe bring that cycling mode share up. Um, but worth considering when you do all of this that, that 
depending on how ambitious you want to be with this, that requires a fair amount of space being created to make the space for those really good routes. By and large, we may be at saturation point for people who are prepared to cycle in the current conditions. And to get a jump up, you might need some substantially more sort of space and infrastructure dedicated to it. Um, so we're thinking that if, if you really want to make a step change in that space is probably what you're after. So we flip back to the first thing in the book now. Please all enjoy the sort of Monty Python-esque picture that Alistair in our office has made for this. It's made me smile. Making buses cheaper or free. We hear a lot about people wanting public transport just to be cheaper, to be cheaper than the car for the equivalent journey. Um, to sort of somehow it feels right, maybe, to have public transport be cheaper than car. It feels like incentivizing people in the right direction. It may be that we might want to do this for certain groups of people, young people, job seekers, people on lower incomes. Or it may be that we want to do this for specific routes to key areas. Um, the one thing worth reflecting on that is making buses cheaper or free is incredibly expensive. It requires a lot of money. If that's the thing that's really important to you, it's an expensive thing to deliver and you really want to be prepared to do something that generates the money to support that. It's also worth noting that if you spend quite a lot of money making buses cheaper or free, it's less money you might have to spend putting on new routes in areas that aren't currently well served or running buses out of hours where, they sudden, where you'd rather have a longer service. So it's thinking about uh, when you're thinking about your vision, if that's important, thinking about how much uh, money that, that would need. The other thing that's worth noticing is there's sometimes a little bit of lack of clarity about the importance of public transport. When we talk to people, we hear it a lot here, we hear it a lot in engagements. People say we want cheap public transport. If you do a rather dry on paper exercise looking at public transport costs relative to car, if you wrap up time and money costs together in the way that techie transport people tend to do to make a sort of hybrid cost, any time you do that analysis, it seems to suggest that the cost of public transport is really quite a small component in why it's less good than car, and the time that public transport takes on paper looks more important. But when you talk to people, they tell you it's the cost. So it's worth, there just is some uncertainty about the extent to which making public transport free would actually make it better and make people want to get on it. It's an open question. So we're thinking about. Making buses faster and more reliable is a really big one. So improving the services that already exist. At the moment, as they come into town, many buses slow down, and particularly getting through and across the city is really slow. Uh, and very often you have to stop and change in the centre of city to get out of the other side. And that is because the buses are sitting in the same traffic queue as everyone else. And at the moment, there's very little space for the buses to get around and go faster. But it is an old historic city and the streets are narrow. And so really making spaces for buses to have priority. And, and I'm sort of assuming that any time you would create a bus priority alongside it, we'd create cycling and walking priority because that tends to be what happens. Anytime you do that does probably require some quite substantial road closures with quite big implications for the cars that used to use that road. So you might achieve a lot with carving out space, but you have to be sort of, sort of have in mind that that's quite a, a bold move you, move you would probably have to take. Uh, there we go. Uh, On-demand rural transport is another thing. We know, we talked a lot yesterday about buses and subsidies and what gets done. We know that subsidising rural buses is really expensive, and currently in lots of places the service isn't as good as lots of people want them to be. Um, but also that the county council has had to increasingly cut rural bus services because they're very, very expensive. Uh, is it possible that we could spend some money trying out some alternative ways of doing rural bus, thinking about um, on-demand services where people could call a sort of some sort of minibus shuttle taxi to get them to the nearest station, rather than having rural bus routes that are long and slow and infrequent? open question, if that sounds like a thing that you're very interested in, that's something that requires probably quite a bit of money to set up and get trialled. It may in the long run save money if you can give a better service with that than with traditional rural bus sub subsidies, but probably if that's a thing that's important to you, uh, then that's going to be a thing that requires money. And then all these things trade off between if you want a lot of things that cost money which are more and less important to you. Um, uh, the good thing about a rural bus service might be that it can sort of extend the benefits of the planned infrastructure. So where there are public transport routes going out into sort of the, all the places that people commute into Cambridge from, could, could those feeder routes sort of pull people into that network and allow more people to benefit from it than, would, than can be directly served? 
adding new bus services, so as distinct from making the existing bus services cheaper and faster, there are things you can do to add new routes. We know there are lots of people who don't have a good service, or there's a service that goes past their house but doesn't take them where they need to go, uh, or there's a service that runs past their house that takes them where they need to go, but not in the middle of night when they need it because they're a shift worker. Um, so adding on to that, again, that's something that likely will cost money, um, would require subsidy, and so that's the thing where, if that's very important to you, you want to be thinking about what part of your package might raise money to support that. Uh, and then the last one, more park and ride. Bit of money, bit of space, actually. Um, so we'd need spaces for park and rides. There are already new par planned park and rides. The public transport infrastructure routes that come into Cambridge are planned to have park and rides on them to collect people up and bring them in. Park and ride can be an efficient way to serve a small city where people come in from a long distance because you just can't put everyone in that huge dispersed area on a network, but you can sort of collect them at some points and bring them into the city. And doing that helps those routes more, be more financially sustainable because you can get a lot of people onto the bus. Um, so that's one thing. But again, there's an element of once you're getting more people into that park and ride, you probably need to put more buses on the road to get them into town, and you probably need a bit of space to do that, um, to get them into town fast. So in all of these things, there's a bit of thinking, what are the things I want to do that might require money to get them done, uh, over and above what we're already doing? And what are the things that just require me to get cars out of the way somehow? So the getting cars out of the way might either be because you're charging them and discouraging them from using the road and from using alternatives, or because you're physically creating space for them to go faster, but some way of making space for them to go. <coughs> to an extent, it might be that you feel you want a bit of both of those. So in some cases, simply throwing money at the problem will not help the public transport be better because they can't get down the road any quicker. Uh, in other cases, making space for those buses helps to a certain extent, but really what you need are more buses uh, and more people being served. And it might be that you're not very interested in buses at all, and actually it's cycling and walking that you really want to make the space for. It's just thinking a little bit around, keeping in mind what it is that you want. Um, where's my clicker? Thank you. I thought it would be helpful, you've got these on your tables, I think, your vision things. I thought it would be helpful to just rattle through them and give you a sort of money space idea of what it is we're looking for. So, affordable public transport, money. Need money to do that. Fast and reliable space on the road. Really, they can't be any faster and more reliable without getting the cars in front of them out of the way. Uh, environmental and zero carbon, that's an emissions focus. You could achieve that by decarbonising the fleet without really changing the number of cars on the road or what people are doing. So that's sort of neither money or space, but it's really just emissions focused. It may be that some of you are happy to achieve that goal and less interested in the others. Uh, restricting the city only to clean in electric vehicles. That's focused on emissions, but it's also about creating space because there are much fewer of those vehicles at the moment. So that would free up space for better public transport. Restricting the city, oh, sorry, people-centred. That's really about space, actually. That's about making space for people and bikes rather than cars. Be managed as one coordinated system. That's one of the things I think I'd put in the bracket of systems and supporting measures. That might make what's going on run a lot better. It not, is not is in and of itself going to create more space or more money or reduce emissions. Enabling interconnection, broadly speaking, that's about space. Part of the problem is that not, we can't make these connections between all these disparate sites well, because the, the, sort of, the transport can't get through the city quick enough. Interconnected cycle infrastructure requires space. Major infrastructure improvements, I've sort of bracketed there. I think we outlined at the beginning of this weekend that there are these big infrastructure improvements sort of planned and underway, and those are kind of happening anyway, so you don't really need to factor that into your bundles. Um, Safe layouts for different users, that needs space. Educating about different options, that's one of those kind of systems, wraparound measures, I think, that can be part of a package. Minimising the need for journeys, that's kind of a systemic thing, that's about the planning system and where we put houses and transports, and for sure that might be an important part of the mix for some of you, but it's a very long-term intervention. It's not a thing that we can suddenly change in the next five years, but it may be a really important part of how we think about the future and not sort of building the problem back in for ourselves. And broadband, and broadband yeah, that's right. Um, education about different options, minimising the journeys-based system. Transport that's accessible to all prob probably requires some, some money to support that. Uh, technology to be responsive to demand uh, it's probably requires money for investment. Predictable journey times, most of the variability is around congestion and about 
uh, not getting through in fact, so that's making space, getting cars off the road. Uh, da -da -da, supporting a range of modes requires space, essentially, to give them all their own space. Not making Cambridge an extension of London, going to put that as system. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, not sure what I can add to that on a sort of space money uh, uh, comment, but that's broadly what we're thinking. So if it's helpful, we can kind of leave that up while you're having your chats. Great. Thank you very much, Lynn. And we'll uh, hear again from Lynn in, in a few minutes. But what we're, what we're hearing, what we've, we've heard, I guess, throughout all, uh, well, both weekends so far, is there, is there are no easy answers to this. Um, there are lots of kind of trade-offs that need to be made, lots of kind of complexity in this. And that's where the, the power of something like a citizen assembly comes in, kind of 60 um, people drawn from all uh, kind of walks of life, um, using your kind of collective kind of brain power to think through, actually, what do we want to achieve and what are the steps that we're willing to take to, uh, to achieve that. So to help to um, uh, help you to start to think about that um, today, um, we're just going to go to the um, uh, kind of introductions around your table, but we're going to get you to, to start to think about the um, the uh, the measures that you um, well, that Lynn uh, spoke about um, earlier, and uh, just to think about where your uh, priorities lie uh, with those measures. So I'll hand over to your table facilitators to lead that now. continue discussing in a minute but this was just uh, a very quick exercise just to get you to thinking I mean of course all of these are, are fantastic things that we would like to be doing but they all require something they all require space or money or a combination of the two and that's kind of really useful to, to be thinking about when it comes then to, to thinking about the enabling measures um, what measures might we need to introduce so we can kind of free up that space or free up that money uh, to, to do these things? Or actually, are we happy with, uh, with not uh, doing any of them at all and kind of keeping things as they are at the moment? Uh, so to kind of outline that in a little bit more detail, I'm going to hand back to, to Lynn again when she's <laughs> finished with... <laughs> can I borrow, <laughs> borrow Lynn? <laughs> yeah, so uh, coming back to... Uh, some uh, some further kind of clarifications and sorry, I was just doing a clarification oh. and I've just put a mint humbug in my mouth. <laughs> right. So Tim and Sue have taken you through the fact that there's going to be voting, and I think this conversation as it runs up to voting is a little bit about thinking we're not asking you to vote on the measures you just talked about. We're asking you to vote on what it is you're prepared to consider in getting to those outcomes. So that means you kind of want to think about this as kind of a cake recipe, sort of. You want to be thinking about, what is it that I want to bake? Is it a flapjack or is it a wedding cake? You know, how, how, what's the scale of my ambition here? And if that's the place that I sort of feel like I want to end up, what ingredients do I need to get me to that point? That's kind of broadly where we want to be thinking about this. Um, and so it's about thinking, those three objectives, improving air quality, improving public transport, walking and cycling, creating space uh, for those, supporting systems measures that wrap around how measures are implemented in particular once they're selected. So if you're going to do this, it's only acceptable to me if you do it in this way, which is a thing we'll come to this afternoon in particular. How am I going to raise money for it? These are all the questions. So if you have fixed in your mind where it is you want to get to based on the sorts of things that we've been talking about for the whole of these two weekends, and then thinking about your voting in light of what am I prepared to consider to get that done. So I thought it might be helpful to walk through some examples of the way in which Susan Tim expect, sort of intend that you come at this. So you might be sitting at your table thinking, I'm absolutely not interested in anything that charges drivers. That's unfair. It's not what I want to do, I don't think it's acceptable. But I really do want to make public transport better, and I think the best way to do that is to carve space through town to allow buses, cycles, pedestrians to get where they need to go, uninterrupted by traffic, faster. So I'm up for some really radical route closures through town, which allow that to happen. I might want to wrap on a systems measure of some traffic light improvements so that those buses can move more or less without stopping. I think that will do enough. And then you sort of sit back and you sort of maybe you look back at the three things. Are we improving air quality? Are we reducing congestion? Are we improving public transport? You think, well, 
That does enough for me to improve public transport. It makes space. There's no new money, so there'll be no extra services, but what's there will just run a lot better. You think, mm, is it going to reduce congestion? I'm not sure. It will reduce congestion in those areas where you've physically banned the cars. Depending on how radical I'm prepared to be, maybe, maybe there'll be more congestion elsewhere, and I don't mind. Hi, yellow card. Sorry. Will do. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you've got in your mind, essentially, your starting point is, I think the right answer here is make, carving out some space so that everything can get through town quicker and not allowing cars in the way. People can walk around better and what have you. Thinking back to those three objectives, you've done something to make public transport much better. Tick. You're thinking about, have I improved air quality? And you think to yourself, well, probably have in those areas. Maybe it's not as good in other areas if cars are diverting. Ask yourself if you're all right with that or if you want to bring in an additional measure that will shore up air quality everywhere. That's a sort of question for what you care about and what you want to vote for. And then think to yourself, well, has this raised any money? No, it hasn't. Closing roads doesn't raise money. Am I all right with that? Or do some of those things that I really want cost money? So you may be thinking to yourself, I'm all right with that. I'm not that wedded to the things that cost money. We can do without them as long as the buses can move really fast. Maybe that's your position. In which case, that shapes what you're voting for. If you're not all right with that, if you think it's really important to carve out that space, but you also want some money, maybe you're thinking, OK, maybe we need to bump up parking charges. I have a workplace parking levy as well, because I need some money source, or not. So it's that kind of, it's working through, what's my starting point of the best idea? Is that hitting the kind of targets? How much do I care about that? If not, do I need to wrap something else in? So the person sitting next to you might start from an entirely different point. That person might be thinking, in my view, drivers should be charged to come into the city. They're causing congestion. They're emitting pollutants, which are not OK. And we should pay to deter them from doing that and to encourage them to move clean vehicles. That might be your starting point. And then you ask yourself, well, which, which of these objectives does it hit? Is that, is that going to do what we want it to do? Air quality? Yes, on balance, we think that can make a really big impact on air quality. Congestion? Yeah, you know, the, we seem to be thinking that, that will reduce congestion, take few, more cars off the road, because some people will be deterred by having to pay. Not as many people will be deterred as if we charged everyone, because we maybe I, we only want to charge the green cars. Oh, sorry, the not green cars. Slip. It's the humbug that's throwing me off. Um, <laughs> uh, and yes, it raises some money, so that's good. You know, maybe slightly less money because slightly fewer cars are paying it. But I only want, you know, I think that's enough. That's all right for me. Or, God, I want to raise some more money as well. I really want to throw everything in the kitchen sink at this. Maybe I should have a workplace parking levy as well to get even more money, because all of these things that cost money are very important to me. So it's not that we're asking you to pick what things you want to come out of the other end. It's just that we're asking, when you're voting, think about what it is you want to achieve and what scale of space or money you think you need to do to get that and how much you care about those three objectives. Air quality, making space for transport, raising money for transport. So that's as we're going through. A third person sitting next to you might start from an entirely different perspective. Someone in this room might be sitting there thinking, it's not right for people to pay for this, but money needs to be raised and businesses should be stepping up to the plate. So you might be thinking, right, workplace parking levy, because that's a tax that businesses pay, and it's not my business if they pass it on to their employees or not, but it comes from the businesses. You might be thinking, clean air zone that is just buses and HGVs and vans, because businesses will pay for that, and they will then either change their vehicles or pay the charge, but one way or the other, they're bearing the brunt of the cost, and maybe that's passed on, but not my business. And you might be all right with that. You know, we've raised a lot of money. We haven't necessarily done a lot for making space, but we have got a huge amount of money we can throw at some of these things, like pulling people in from rural areas and what have you. Maybe that's enough for me. Or maybe I also want to do something to create space. So the idea is just that you will all have your own different balance of this. But it's just, when you vote, I guess, the idea is that you don't vote on which on paper measure is the best for doing this. It's which is what I really prefer from this, in order that I can get to the vision I've got in my head. Am I baking a wedding cake? Am I baking a flapjack? And what ingredients do I need to make that properly? That's kind of where we're at with this. A couple of things to clarify that came up last time, just whilst you're thinking about this. There are some things that we really want you to remember and have in mind. 
One is just the reminder again, we said this a lot, but any money that was raised, the intention is that that will be ring-fenced and spent on improvements to public transport, walking and cycling. And those improvements will be made across the area that this room represents, focused on helping people get to the city better. Um, so the, the, I think we envisage that the measures, any sort of charges or road closures or anything that you might do, would be focused on Greater Cambridge itself, but the, the funds to support the improvements would be region-wide because the city of Cambridge depends on that whole region. It's not just about a very tight administrative boundary. The other thing um, to remember is that, that there's a phasing thing in here and there are some of these things that are kind of quick wins and there are some of them that take a longer time, but there is a commitment from the GCP to front fund the things that cost a lot of money. So we're aware that there is this sort of chicken and egg thing where you sort of say, well, I can't get public transport because it's rubbish and you can't charge me to drive if the public transport is rubbish. And so we're in this, but no one gets the public transport so it continues to be rubbish. You know, we don't, we kind of want to put a finger in that circle. There is money set aside, as Isabel described yesterday, to spend on front funding that public transport before necessarily everyone's getting on it because the other measures aren't put in place. So there's money to, to fund it at the front. That money goes on to about 2030 and then it stops because that's what the city deal gives us. So we can front fund to an extent as patronage picks up and maybe roads are closed or maybe charges are introduced that pushes people off their cars onto the transport. But if you want things that cost money, then at some point that money has to start flowing in because in 2030 it runs out and we can't, you know, so that those services fall off a cliff if there isn't something to pay for them. There also would be, because of that, several years to get used to whatever was going to happen, road closures or charges or parking charges or workplace parking levies. It takes a while to put that stuff in place. So in any scenario, in anything you did, there'd be a couple of years of communications and lead-in and warnings about what you might need to do to change your behaviour. So all of that stuff, there is a sort of, n none of this is going to sort of come in tomorrow. There's a long lead-in to quite a lot of this stuff, but it's about what is your aspiration for the direction of travel and what's the scale of your ambition. Uh, and so, yeah, communications on all of those points, would there'd be plenty of time to do that. I think that's all I was going to say. Yeah. Okay, quite a lot to take in there. Um, I think as... Um, but we thought that that was useful, kind of just stuff to reiterate, you know, the point about funds being raised, being ring-fenced for better better public transport, things like, like that. Um, as Tim said, we're sort of going to give you some time now to, taking the baking analogy, to test out some recipes at your tables. This is purely a kind of try before you buy doing your, doing your vote. Okay? So at tables, I want you to, to, to take some time to think about, as Lynn said, what, what might these different combinations be before you get to do those um, on, your, on your vote papers. So you, you might go through, test them, what does this deliver? What do we think of that as a table? Test that with the, with the, the experts, with David, Lynn, with Isabel, Peter. Is this going to deliver what I think it might deliver? Um, so what impact am I, I looking to get? Where, how far do I want to achieve the vision um, that we've been talking about over the, over the last two weekends? How acceptable might that be? Okay, just one thing to be really clear. This is your time to test this at your tables. We'll, we might write things up on the flip chart. You're going to play around with little bits of post-it note. This is not part of the record. This is part of you just testing it out. And it's not about you getting to a consensus as a table. You might all have different views, but discuss those views. So it's just a chance for you to kind of get familiar with what we're then going to be asking you to vote on. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to the table facilitators. We've probably got about 40, 45 minutes to do this. So for the vote, there will be five different ballots. So the first three ballots essentially kind of match up with uh, the columns that you've just been thinking about. So the first ballot will be around 
be on the screen as well. So the first ballot will be around the outcome of uh, reducing congestion and creating road space. So this is your chance to uh, signal your own individual preference. But we're asking you to, of course, kind of consider everything that you've learnt over the two weekends, consider the vision that you've come up with, consider um, the improvements that you might want to uh, be kind of either creating space for or, or creating money for. Uh, so have those things in your mind, have the discussion you've just had in your mind, but this is all about your own, uh, your preference. So you'll see that there are the, the options that you've had on your, uh, on your flip chart paper. And what we'll ask you to do is to, to number them. So um, if something's your first preference, put a number one against it. Second preference, number two, three, four, uh, so on. You can, do, uh, you can use up all of your preferences. So you can say kind of uh, one to six. Or you might decide that actually um, I just have kind of one preference around this. And uh, the, the, rest that, uh, the rest I don't, uh, I guess, care too much about. So I'm only going to say kind of my first preference. Um, or, as I say, you could say one to six. And remember, so there is the, the option as well to say no additional intervention. So, uh, if you want, uh, so if you don't want to introduce any, you don't think any of the, the measures should be introduced, then you can um, put your preference uh, against that one. So, the, the way that the counts will work is that if you've given something a first preference, then it will get more points than if you give it a second preference. So then when we add up all of those points across the assembly, we can see actually kind of where does the, I guess, the consensus view across the assembly kind of broadly fit. So just an example for this one, because there are six different options, the, um, uh, the one that you give your first preference will get six points, the one that you give your second preference will get five points, and so on. So we can then get a sense of actually kind of... Uh, so it might be that your kind of first preferences across the assembly are kind of split, but maybe um, a lot of you have a, a very similar second preference. Uh, so that one then might come out on top. So that's kind of why we do it in this way, and we'll see. Yeah, this question. Yeah. So yeah, so you can you can you can avoid giving something a preference at all if you don't think it should. And actually, so I guess if you have two preferences, so you think well maybe pollution charge and then flexible charge, but the rest I don't think should be introduced. Then maybe you put the no additional intervention as your your third choice, and then don't number the rest. Does that make sense to everyone? So there will be an opportunity. Uh, so. You're, you're racing on to what is on the, the fourth ballot. So this is where everything gets listed, and you get to say whether you strongly oppose it, oppose it, neither support nor oppose, support or strongly support. So please, when, it, when you're doing the first three ballots, just put numbers in, because if we put a cross, there'll be no way for us to interpret that, and we might have to discard the ballot. Yeah, there's a question. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so the so the ones that are missed off here are the ones that are crossed out on your flip charts because they're the ones that won't have an impact on that, those particular outcomes. So you'll see that yeah. So for the first three votes, uh, not all of the options will be present because some of them, uh, as we've discussed, won't have an impact on that particular outcome. Uh, so so those will be slightly different. So um, yeah, please do kind of check carefully the ballot that you're, you're doing. They're all colour-coded when it comes to it. So, your, so question one will be on kind of white paper. Question two is on a blue pa ballot paper. Question three is on a green. Uh, but you'll be able to see that that corresponds to what's on, on your flip chart. And yeah, the crossed out ones won't be on the list. Yeah, so you would, you would lose those additional points.
points, but essentially you're choosing not to give those points to an option that you don't think should be introduced. So if you do have a slight preference between the others, then you might include those numbers. If not, then, yeah, sorry. Can I just check, so your top row is one or six? <laughs> so, yeah. So when it comes to you numbering, first preference is number one, second preference is number two. So it just for when we do the scoring, uh, it then kind of equates that kind of what you put down as number one then gets six points. But you can forget about that. Just number them. So first preference, number one. Second preference, number two. Third preference, number three, etc. So these are preferences on these. On the first three are preferences. And they're according to those three different outcomes. So the first one... Uh, so the first one is around reducing congestion and creating road space. Second one will be around the outcome of improving air quality. And the third one will be around raising funds for improved public and active transport. That's another question. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that would actually the the iffy ones would then actually like get less votes than the other ones if that makes sense. So. Okay. You're, I mean, so that gets that gets very complicated. I mean, don't do that, but. <laughs> So just start with one and go down as many numbers as you want to, to go down. A few other questions? Yeah, welcome. It says on each of these questions, uh, do you have any comments? Uh, yeah, so there will be an option at the bottom of the, the ballot paper. You'll see that there's a comment box as well, so uh, you can record any comments there. Uh, as we said earlier, there will also, for the next, well, I guess the session after lunch, uh, we'll be starting to think about um, some of the, the things that would need to be put in place if the measures that come out on top were to be implemented. So you'll also have an opportunity then to say, well, these criteria would have to be met. This would only be acceptable if this were to happen uh, as well. So you'll get that opportunity later. But also, if you want to, to record comments on the ballot paper, you're, you're perfectly welcome to do that. Question five... Um, asks you to do, again, to do the preferences, this time with them all listed, but according to the... the no, this question five. So question four was the whether you oppose, well, strongly oppose, oppose, neither support nor oppose, support or strongly support each of the, the different measures. When it comes to, to question five, we're asking you to think about the whole statement, uh, so all three parts... Um, of the kind of creating road space, of improving air quality, and of um, funding uh, public transport, and then thinking what your preferences would be. So it might be that for the first three that you have completely different preferences, depending on what those different outcomes are. It might be that you have a very similar preference across the three, which will probably make question five a lot easier to answer. But if you have decided that actually to achieve the different outcomes, I have a slightly different kind of preference order, then for this, you'll just have to think about actually what's most important to me and how do I put these things together into, into kind of one package. So you've, we'll, we're going to give you a decent amount of time to, to go through the ballot papers and do this now. So um, and please feel free to, well, to call me or Suze uh, up to, to answer any more questions. You've also got your table facilitators to, to help you on the table as well. So remind that this is your own kind of individual preference. So you can base it on kind of what's gone before, uh, but uh, it's entirely up to you. And, uh, and yeah, of course, there is that option to say no additional uh, intervention if you like as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
So that's a, that's a very good question. So the, the other measures that we discussed uh, yesterday, we'll be looking at those um, later and we'll have another vote around those. So it might be that you decide that actually you don't want any of these things and you think that the answer lies in some of the supporting measures that you came up with. That's perfectly fine to then say no additional intervention and then you can vote later on for those, those other measures instead. Um, so that, that will come. It's, that's entirely up to you. Um, and uh, as we said, so if you have, like, if you think conditions should be placed on the, uh, any of these things being introduced, then you can add them as a comment on the bottom of your ballot paper, but there will also be the opportunity later on to, um, when, we, when we look at what comes out on top, to have that discussion about we think these things would need to be introduced to, to make this acceptable or to, uh, to support this measure. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so I'll get your table facilitators to hand out the ballots. Um, we're going to give them all, to you all at once, so you can kind of think about them um, uh, as one. Uh, but we're going to give you kind of a decent amount of time to, to, to think about this. Um, once you've finished completing them, can you hand them back to your table facilitator? And then Andreas will come round to collect them. just so uh, I guess hopefully to, to help you think about them so if you um, if you find your kind of ballot paper one which will be the one on the white paper so this is the one about reducing congestion and creating road space so so opportunity now to think through kind of what your your ranking would be for those so you can kind of number them one to six or one to up to however many you want to uh, to do a preference for. go through them in turn so uh As you complete your ballots, keep hold of them just so you can refer back to them as you come to the later ballots if that helps.
if you make a mistake, it's fine to scribble something out and rewrite it. Just make sure it's clear. Um, if you need it, we've got spare ballot papers so we can swap one for you. Yeah, so when it comes to when it comes to vote four, so that's a slightly different one according to whether you oppose or uh, support something, then just tick the box that's relevant. all five of your ballot papers um, make sure you've got all five and hand them across to your table facilitator and then Andreas will be coming around with the the ballot box to collect them
of your table's ballots. Can you hold them up so Andreas can come and collect them? So uh, table two is just pointing out that the sun is coming out, which must be a sign that you've found the answer. Uh, <laughs> so if you're still competing ballots, it's absolutely fine. Take as long as you need. Uh, but quite a few people have finished. So now is lunchtime. We're going to give you an hour for lunch this time. Not really because we're being overly generous. It's just because it takes us time to <laughs> count up all the ballots. <laughs> So if you've finished, then uh, feel free to go and get lunch. Uh, if you've not finished, then kind of stay where you are. Just complete your ballots uh, in your own time. There's some furious activity going on out there doing all the counting. But they're nearly there. They're nearly there. But whilst, whilst they're just getting that ready, um, if you remember yesterday, we went through the kind of additional supporting systems behavior type measures and you fed back two or three kind of key ones from your tables. So what we're going to do now is to kind of say, okay, of all of those measures, which ones do you think? And, and, and let's be clear, I'm going to put all of those measures that you fed back into the, into the report that goes forward. But what's quite useful, by the way, Riley Tommy can just stand to one side for a moment. <laughs> You're being over keen. <laughs> um, is I will put them all in the, the report, but it's really useful to kind of get a sense of, of, the, of the measures, of which there are 22, 
where is the kind of the, the emphasis on those that you really think are going to make a difference? So first of all, what I'm going to do is just run through those measures. You have on your tables three copies of them. I was being a little bit mindful of how much um, paper I was producing. So I'm just going to run through them, but, and then we'll go on to Mentimeter, okay? There are also two versions up on the wall at the back there. So you've got three copies on, the, on your tables. We've got them up here, and there's two copies on, on the flip chart. Um, the first... OK, I'm going to come, to come to that. So the first few were the ones that, that, that Lynn went through. So A is about optimising the traffic signals. B car sharing, C, having an electric vehicle charging network, D, other ways of raising revenue, E, now the observant amongst you will realise that actually up, up here is, 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 is as it should be, so mayor, the mayor to franchise buses. On the printouts that you have, it says, there's a typo, it says major, okay? but. <laughs> The major mayor. But so E, and, and this will be on your Mentimeter, is the mayor to franchise buses. F was travel planning by businesses. G was planting trees, which included the, the, the hedgerows as well, so that's just a that's a shortcut for that. Um, H, the alternate days number plate suggestion. I was about mini franchising, which I think was the, the, the businesses doing their kind of mini franchising. Um, J was cargo bikes. Um, K was um, alternative funding, so um, uh, sponsorship from other companies. Um, L was uh, the idea about having the long distance buses going to um, park and ride. M was introducing more bike parking. N was introducing incentives to use public transport, so things like point systems, free coffee, subsidy for frequent users. O was um, establishing park and rides further outside of town. P was the, the lollipop, kind of orbital bus service that we heard about. Um, uh, Q was, thank you, Q was um, setting up uh, charging points at transport hubs, like at the park and ride. Hello. Can I just ask, what's the difference between Q and C? So, C, so it's just really in terms of specificity, I suppose. So C was an electric charging network. Q was specifically around particular hubs. Now, of course, when you come to vote, you can see that those two might, you know, would you know, might, might be similar, but that's the, that's the slight difference between them. Um, R is the um, establishing car sharing lanes. S was about the encouragement of the use of electric bikes. Um, T was establishing a heavy duty depot outside of Cambridge and then having that kind of last mile delivery through sort of electric or pedal power. And um, you was um, supporting on-demand transport um, and sort of community car schemes, dial-a-ride schemes, things like that. Okay? So there's quite a number of things up there. Those are what will appear on your, on your Mentimeter, and I will, once I've gone through Mentimeter, I'll, I'll flip that back. Okay, Lizzie. Yeah, yeah. So, what I think I would suggest, and I'm looking helpfully towards Tim, see if he can rescue me here. So, I, 
I think a bit like when we just said about the, 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 the point you made about electric charging points. So I was going to give you eight votes, and I think that exactly you might look at where those combine together. Um, so, for example, if you know, if you if you looked at um, electric charging points and um, and the, the the other one about electric um, charging points in uh, transport hubs. Yeah. yeah. So, can I suggest if um, if everybody in in the room is happy with us, essentially those things being the same thing, then whichever one you vote for, we'll make sure that then when we report it, they get put together. So it's clear that that is kind of one option that's had, that has both the votes from... Okay, what if... Okay, so there's a sense that J and T are different, so we'll keep those as separate. The one on the charging points, do people feel there's a, a substantial difference between those two? That's a very good point. So we will just remove one of those from Mentimeter. We will remove the um, uh, Q charging points, so that will... Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, if... Okay, so there we have a clear distinction. So if everybody is happy, we'll kind of proceed on that basis. And you'll just need to kind of decide which is most important to you or vote for, for both of them if you wish to do so. We can't just... Sorry. Yes, quickly. Yeah. So, um, option B and option R. So, okay, option B was car sharing. Option R was establishing car share lanes. <laughs> Didn't hear that. <laughs> Do you think those are combined? No. Okay, we'll keep them as the same. Zara. What, sorry, one, one second, Zara. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do we deliver an efficient cashier? Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think what I'm going to suggest is we stay with this, but we're mindful that, as I said right at the beginning, we're going to keep all of these. These were all ones that you, you thought were important yesterday. And what we're doing in the vote is we're just saying, which ones are really, you, you know, where does the room feel that priority goes? And of course, when you look at that as a whole, there will be some that are, that are kind of dimensions of the same thing, but have quite different kind of outcomes. So I think that it sounds like what I'm hearing is it's important to keep them separate whilst being mindful that the concept, so for example, if charging points comes up quite high, that concept of charging points is important. How exactly it is delivered needs thinking thinking through okay Ooh. okay lizzie you yes yes so it was the top it was the top 2 or 3 that you came up with Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so, you know, and remember this is a sort of, I'm going to say it again, these are all important, okay? So what we're doing in the Mentimeter voting is just giving an emphasis to those that you think are going to be most impactful and that you would really like to see as part of, of moving forward, okay? The, all of these will go into the report in the um, slightly, you know, the, this, the less brief form. Thank you, Jeannie, for helping me out there <laughs> with my words. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, having gone through those, um, there's two things I want to say before I put the Mentimeter uh, slide up. Observers, you can't vote. <laughs> so, green team, can you make sure that they're not looking at their... Um, phones too, too, too uh, keenly. Um, and likewise, uh, Boris has made sure that the code isn't live streamed. <laughs> so, because um, that would really throw things. Um, so, Tim, you've taken away the slide. <laughs> if people, do, if you remember, it was um, menti.com. So if you get on your phone or put your hand up if you need some assistance with the phone. The Wi-Fi is the open Muller site. And we will give you the code in a second. Does anyone need a mobile? Hopefully the Wi-Fi is working for us. Is it? I can't tell you. How do you know that, Bethany? From was it it come up? Oh, was it up there? God, you're sharp, aren't you? <laughs> okay, so there you are. The code is I'm not going to say it out loud. <laughs> Thanks, Boris. <laughs> Nearly tripped myself up. So the code is up there. Observers, shut your eyes. Okay, you can, you can click the heart if you want to. There should be 53. Okay, no, that's fine. You've gone, on to the you've gone on to that next page. Okay. Oh, hang on. That's the old question. Okay, I think it's remembered you from before, hasn't it? So you might want to just. Uh, some people have gone on to the one that's before, the question that's before. So, um, yeah, I don't know why I think that they, the phone has remembered it. Can you make sure that you put in the new code? You should not have the question that we asked you last time. The question should be something about supporting measures. Huh? Okay. It's just the time for the Wi-Fi to be slow, right? Is it the students? That's the difference, isn't it? This weekend. Okay, if you press your heart, look at all that love that's coming out. Um, there should be, when, when you get to this page, there's a little heart that you can click on. And we're at 50, 51, 52, way, yeah, got up, oh, whoa. 
Oh, you can press it more than once. Okay. <laughs> this is why I don't like doing Mentimeter. That's why I gave it to Tim last time. Okay. So, are we ready on the next page? Yeah, I think some people have... Um, no, there's 53 of us. Okay. Have you got the results hidden, yeah? So remember, look at your pieces of paper. You have eight votes. And there's quite a lot to go through, so don't, you know, take your time. Remember, you scroll your screen to go down to the, the further options. Thank you. I was thinking the, the higher numbers, but they're letters. When you've chosen your eight, you can do submit. and then they got the screen again to vote. Okay, if, if some people have got the screen for the second time, clearly please don't vote again. I don't know, there's some weird tech going on. So some people I think have submitted their vote and then it, the screen has come back again. Hmm. When they're through, can you close the boat? <laughs> so once you've done your eight choices, then press submit. If you've got any problems, put your hand up and someone with a green t-shirt will come and help you. and then it goes back to the questions. Okay. So if you get the, do you want to refresh your screen? Don't. <laughs> okay, we're nearly there. So we're on 47 at the moment. It's okay. Need your countdown music.
Okay, we're on 53. Close the voting. Okay, guys, uh, let's have a look and see what the results show. Everybody's voted. Yeah, we got 53 down at the bottom. Okay, so... Um, no, so today we've got 53 people. No, that was on the hearts. People could do that more than one. So this, this is the important one. It's 53. You're a good checker, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you. Keeping us on track. Okay, so um, the top voted there was to inch, uh, for the mayor to franchise buses with 40. <laughs> Okay, and the, I, I don't think the mayor's here. Um, you might, might be watching on the live stream. Um, and then with uh, 33 was the uh, one which was about planting trees and hedges to absorb carbon. And uh, then 32 was... Um, the encouraging the use of electric bikes and subsidies and loan schemes and hire schemes for electric bikes. And then 31 was the, um, the lollipop bus service with low emission or electric vehicles. So that's one, two, three. And then, so those were definitely kind of the, up there at the top. And then I suppose 20, with 25 votes there, um, exploring the viability of long distance buses using the park and ride. And I'll just go on the 224s there. Um, so, T, which was establishing a heavy duty depot outside of Cambridge with the last mile delivery through electric vans and um, pedal power. And the, the, the 24 here, which was about optimizing the traffic signals. So, obviously, all of this will be will be recorded, but those were, and, and obviously there are some there that have sort of 20s and, um, and 23s as well. Okay, so that's a sort of where we got to, where you got to in terms of the supporting measures and where the feeling in the room was between which ones are going to um, kind of have much, uh, most emphasis but behind them. Are we ready on the... <laughs> It's always encouraging when you're crossing fingers to make sure that things go well. <laughs> so now we're going to move on and kind of reveal the, um, the results from the, from the voting, the paper voting that you did. Um, and then, as we said at the beginning, after we've looked at that, you will go back into your table groups and take a look at those, which of the measures have come up as, as top and think through key messages and key considerations around the implementation of those if those, if those go forward. I'm going to hand over to Tim. Thank you, Sue. So um, we're going to run through the ballots in order. So if you remember, the first ballot uh, was around um, uh, reducing congestion and kind of uh, freeing up uh, road space. And this was the result. Uh, so. In first place, we had the closed roads to cars. And just to remind you, so this is all done with the, with the preference vote. So, uh, so for this one, because there were six options, if something got a first preference, it got six points and uh, so on. And so you can see that the closed roads to cars got 263 points in total. Uh, following up was the, the flexible charge, followed by the restricting or removing parking, pollution charge, and then uh, down towards the bottom were the workplace parking levy and no intervention. So the second ballot was then around air quality. And this was the result. So again, uh, closing roads to cars came out on top. Uh, but that was followed, I guess, fairly shortly after by the kind of clean air zone and then the pollution charge. Flexible charge, also not too far behind. Uh, restricting or removing parking on this one was a bit further down. And then um, no additional intervention uh, was uh, uh, 
uh, the one in last position for that vote. The third vote was then about kind of raising additional funding for uh, public transport. And this was the result. Uh, so for this one, flexible charge got the highest votes, 189. Uh, pollution charge then got 170 points. And then a little bit further down, we had the parking, uh, sorry, workplace parking levy, increasing parking charges, and then no intervention. So the, uh, the fourth vote was then around whether you kind of supported or opposed uh, each of the different measures. And we get this, uh, <laughs> which I will try to explain to you. Uh, this was the easiest way that we could kind of fit everything on one slide because there's obviously quite a lot of information in there. So you can see that the, the closing roads to cars, as, as you might expect from the, the other votes, uh, got the strongest support. So 30 of you said you strongly supported it. 18 of you said you supported it. And it, it kind of tailed down to, to two, neither supporting nor opposing. And then, well, two opposing, one uh, strongly opposing. Then we've got a few of the, I guess, the charging options. So the, the clean air zone, the flexible charge, and the pollution charge, which kind of spike around the support. So a um, fair amount of support, a little less for strongly support. And then um, they're not too much towards the, the opposed end. Uh, then kind of... Uh, which did I miss off from there? The restricting or removing parking was similar as well. You see that kind of uh, peaks up on support. Um, workplace parking levy kind of got, uh, I guess you weren't too sure about this either way, uh, got 16, kind of neither support uh, nor uh, opposed, but got a little bit more support than it did um, opposition. And then finally, the increased parking charges. So this is the one that got the, uh, got the most kind of strongly opposed. Um, kind of almost, I guess, was had six votes for oppose. Uh, quite a few people supporting it, though. So that one was a little bit more kind of mixed. So then if we go on to the, uh, the fifth vote, where we asked you to essentially kind of put it all together. So thinking about all elements of uh, reducing congestion, improving uh, public transport, and improving air quality. This is what we end up with. So as you might expect from the, uh, from the other votes, closing roads to cars got the most support, 341 uh, points for that. Then we had, a, I guess, a bit of a tie in the middle uh, around some of the, the charging options. So uh, clean air zone came out next with 269. Not too far behind was pollution charge with 261. And flexible charge with 259. Uh, then we had the restricting or removing parking, parking uh, I guess a, a little way down from, from those previous ones. And then workplace parking levy and increased parking charges coming in uh, towards the end with no additional intervention, the last option. So, we're gon now going to go to, uh, to your kind of table groups to, to essentially kind of reflect on that. And we're, we're going to be asking you to think about, so kind of what are the reasons behind this vote? Uh, so kind of what, what message do you think kind of you as a citizen assembly are sending back to GCP about what you think should be done? We're also going to be asking you about the, um, those kind of uh, conditions and things that would need to be put in place. Um, were these kind of top option, were the top options to be uh, implemented? Um, and, uh, and also then the key messages that you want to send to, to GCP as well. So your table facilitators will be doing that. Sorry, Tim, there was just something we wanted to do in between. Um, uh, which, um, uh, uh, can we go back to our slides from before? So, so, so I think firstly, is everybody looking at, at the top measures or are we, are we picking the top top? So what I suggest we do is, so uh, well, closing roads to cars obviously comes out on top. I suggest maybe, because these are kind of variations on a similar thing, that we might just deal with those as a bucket and think about actually kind of what message does this kind of overall kind of score here, uh, which tends to uh, suggest that the system assembly is kind of supporting some charging of some kind, but kind of what message do you think 
this sends back to, to GCP. So I think we'll kind of forget about the, the workplace parking levy, the increased parking charges, and the, uh, sorry, the restricting or removing parking for the purposes of the next session. Uh, but if we look specifically at the closed roads to cars and these three that came out kind of quite similarly uh, and think about what's, what's the message behind that that you collectively as a citizen assembly are sending to uh, the GCP board. Is that okay, Suze? Have I passed the test? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Only that. Um, I was going to, um, it's a real starter for 10, but I think that um, if we go back to our main PowerPoint slides, um, I just wanted Lynn just to kind of, uh, so if you click down, yeah. So it, this is a, a, just a bit of a, a start of a 10 about some of the things that you might think about in terms of implementation. Yeah, brilliant, exactly that. So I've had lots of conversations, uh, we all have had lots of conversations with you at tables where you said things like, well, I might be in support of this, but I'd want to know exactly where, or I might like this, but only if it didn't look like that, or I'm worried about this because of this specific aspect. This is where we really bring all of those things to life in light of the broad direction of travel that we're talking about. This is where you can put in those caveats and those concerns, particularly thinking about things like, if, we, if it starts to look like solutions like these, who are the people that gain from that and who are the people that lose from that? And how do we feel about that? What might we want to recommend to sort of mitigate for the people that this is harder for? Particularly for those of you that feel the things that are coming out at the top and you don't like them at all, because ne we'd never get to a point where everyone liked everything. Is there, is, there a, is there a way in which this could be done which would make it less awful for you? You know, what, what helps offset this? What might make it acceptable? What sort of solutions um, might address those issues? Like, how can we mitigate this? What about phasing? Do, is there something you feel very strongly, if this is going to happen, it must only happen when? Dot, dot, dot. Um, think about fairness. Think about the balance of people who live in or near to Cambridge versus the people who live further. Think about people who are on higher incomes versus lower incomes. Think about um, different groups in society, uh, maybe people with mobility concerns, or you know, all the range of people and the range of ways they'll be affected, because none of this is, is straightforward. And also, actually, think about what's the monitoring and feedback we might want on this. Might we try something? And if, you know, are there are there conditions where you might want to say if it's not working in the way we expect, we might want to change what we're doing. So this is really about if those are the things that are coming out on top, how do we implement this in the best way so that we have the best outcome, and this is where you record all of that and send those messages back. The comments from your ballot papers, yes. the, yeah, we will write those up. We okay. To be honest, we've not had a chance to look at the comments yet because it was it was a job to get all of the ballots counted in that amount of time. So, but we will take all of that information away. But if there are comments that you left that you want to re-emphasise, then then do so in the, in this next session. The other thing that you have as a resource on your table is: Do you remember yesterday when you were thinking about the different measures? You came up with pros and cons and considerations. Those are in on your tables, so you can, if you want to, remind yourself about what you said about flexible charge and some of the considerations, you can go back and have a quick refresh. So that's a compilation of what came up in all of the, of, in all of the tables. Okay? Is that all right, table facilitators? Okay. We are ahead of time, so you have time to do this, and that's, I think, important in crafting good key messages. Lizzie? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so we've had, we've, had, we've had our afternoon tea. That was a very nice afternoon tea, wasn't it? Um, so we're on the last, the last mile. We're nearly there, guys and girls. Um, so we're just going to have some feedback from each of the tables on the key messages that you 
came up with. Um, uh, Mel, is your table ready to do some? Uh, have, yeah? yeah? A double act, fantastic. Who am I handing it to you first? Thank you. Um, so for our sort of messages, I think we discussed several times that we needed to be bold and brave, that we wanted to do something that was quality and future-proofed. Um, and we sort of divided um, our recommendations into sort of two main areas that Cambridge itself would be largely traffic free with the road space divided between the bikes and the pedestrians and the buses and that the charging, whether that be pollution or flexible charging, would be used to fund improvements in public transport to benefit the whole area with park and rides and on-demand minibuses. Um, on considerations, we said that the uh, people in charge have to make sure that the signage is clear. Um, there is a publicity and information service that allows people to know that that is happening. Um, that you can't be charged more than once in a day. Um, and that the, if, they, if, if you're going to have closed roads, there has to be permission for people who need access. So that would be emergency vehicles, traders, provided they get a permit, disabled people, carers, um, and then what we do we say? Uh, they need to make sure they've got a proper system worked out for payment of the charges and that the the flexible charge would have a ceiling per day. Uh, on the final page here, um, we said that we felt there ought to be, there ought to have been a bit more blue sky out of the box thinking time for any future um, forums that we're having. Um, one of the things we thought about was uh, a cycle tax five, ten pounds a year, um, but that may be a government thing. Um, we were a bit concerned about road safety, but I'm not sure what that meant. Um, but we should have decent public transport sorted out. Um, and we then said Cambridge could use what we are doing as a USP, come to the number one green city. Oh, sorry, I missed one thing out. Anything that they do has to be done by quality people in a quality way. We don't want any rubbish. <laughs> because we're going to be the number one city in the country that's green. Thank you, Len. Thank you. That's amazing. I, I should have said before, but just to reiterate, we will... We will type all of these up, so it's not just what you're feeding back as, as key messages. All of this will, will be in the report. Okay, Steve, how's your table doing for feedback, and who's doing it? Great. Here you go. Um, we thought that um, road closure and um, road charging are also our top two priority, actually, so we're very happy to see it up there. How we want to do it is to keep uh, keeping cars and cities uh, out of the city centre can be done through distant park and ride and lollipop bus system is our suggested and message to the while the charging will provide the income that is required beyond contribute to the income required beyond 2030. Our wise we would want to con uh, add it up to our key considerations. And um, so we can talk a little bit more about that. We thought that everything that has been decided here should be piloted first. And that way we would use it as an opportunity to really sell the idea more. 
then we should consider the fact that road closures will enable us to do the lollipop bus service that we have spoken about a lot. This will also uh, probably be within the inner ring of Cambridge, but then allow us to also look at how we can link the inner ring with the outer ring. So maybe one-way systems around there as well. And um, need for accessible uh, park and ride by housing developments was one of the things we said. Um, th so the new developments coming up in Cambridge should think about how they fit into this plan. Uh, deliveries must be enabled. So in the grand scheme of things, and uh, into the city center, that has to be pronounced in the overall effect. In terms of charging, also trial camps are first. We really want it to be trialed. Money would go towards uh, providing um, measures that will enable all the things we want to do. Like uh, the inner cycle, we thought about uh, getting lots of electric bikes within so that when people have shopping, I mean heavy shopping, they can use it to the outer cycle. Uh, disabled buses within, electric uh, um, buses within the cycle should be allowed. And um, unit must not adversely impact on tourism because tourism is one of the big things in Cambridge. So we think about how we would accommodate that. And of course, we want the money to be ring-fenced and used exclusively for supporting transportation. Um, moving on to our other things. Our other key message is that we want uh, GCP to be mindful of our great eight that we've achieved in this room. So it should be taken seriously because we want Cambridge to be number one, as you said. <laughs> yes. We want uh, the link, everything we do to be linked to achieving neutral, carbon neutral state overall. And um, we should consider, say, solar power panels on our bus stations so that our buses can kind of charge themselves as they stop when we go on and off them. They are also charging and um, in a green way. Then we should use some of the money for the council to produce seedlings that we residents can go and buy cheaply and plant around our houses. Probably economy plants will be a very good idea. And we must imbibe um, maintenance culture. So we should factor in how we are going to maintain all the bicycle routes we're going to develop, all the uh, cycle and um, everything else. Maintenance should come very highly. Thank you. I hope I've said everything. Anyone wants to add anything? Thank you, Zara. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Lizzie, how... Who's doing it? Are you doing the feedback? I think it's me. I think it's me. I think I'm going for it. We, uh, I did say that they yeah, were making me uh, do their job for them, but no, we decided in the end. Um, we, our key message is um, we agree with a charge, but it must be shared equally. Money and road space from the closures must be used to provide better public transport. That was a very general over, overarching heading, and we went into lots more detail, which is captured on the flip chart as well. The main reasons why um, it creates space, it will charge pollutants, um, and the money for that can then be used to improve public transport. And um, because the that we had a, a conversation as well around um, actually the the reason why this has been chosen is because it uh, will only affect certain people, won't hit everyone's pockets. Um, because congestion and air quality will only get worse if, if this isn't done. And, um, and then another conversation about we've gone down this route because this is the topic we've been focused on and we're really having to discuss, and then that will come into our third flip chart. So then our key considerations and conditions to bear in mind with the vote 
Um, think about exemptions and conditions around road closing. Um, um, so who, who could be exempt? An example, give immunity to carers and emergency services for road closures. Um, think about the funding and the cost. Lots and lots of things about funding, who, who's charged, um, and then actual ongoing funding, which I think has come up on other tables for, for public transport. Um, Monitoring and feedback needed, um, you know, again, I think picking up on some of the trialling and then reviewing, see how things are working. Think about immediate measures where there was a, a feeling that lots of what's been, been voted on are really, could be longer term measures, but what can be done now? What can the, um, coming back to the support measures? Um, an integrated approach for public transport. Um, and fairness was probably our biggest theme actually across um, the considerations loads of things about fairness and it affecting people um, fairly and um, some other uh, specific suggestions around consider different filtering and um, stagger business and school uh, start times and finally ooh, other important messages for the GCP board growth was not in discussion and it's um, been added to all three flip charts. Um, act now and get on with it. Um, no metro, more affordable housing and tax businesses and private schools. So these, again, there's more detail on each of these, but these are some overarching key other messages we wanted to feed back. Great, thank you. Uh, Liz, can I come to your table? Alistair. Alistair. Hello. Um, so we started just by thinking about why we're here at all. Um, and we decided that um, the transport system in Cambridge or in the greater Cambridge area just doesn't work. Um, Cambridge will one of these days just come to a standstill through gridlock. Um, if we don't reduce emissions and become carbon neutral by 2030, Cambridge will quite soon be a coastal town. Um, air quality, low air quality is killing us and our children. Um, and Cambridge city centre just isn't a pleasant place to be. So because of all of these things, we are calling on the board of the Greater Cambridge Partnership to be brave and bold and take decisive action. We want a public transport system which is a credible and excellent alternative to driving. Um, and we think this can be achieved through a publicly owned bus franchise system. Um, we think these improvements could be funded through a fair charge against car use. Um, and I'll go into more detail about that in a moment. Um, and we also want to reallocate road space to pedestrians, cyclists and buses um, in Cambridge City Centre to make it a more pleasant and equitable place to be. Um, we think that any charge um, should not reinforce or widen the gap between rich and poor in this city. Um, and we think that charges should reflect the ability of individuals or companies to pay. Subsidies and exemptions could, should be considered for small businesses and people on low incomes. Um, and it all needs to be backed up by a massive culture change, a change in attitudes, behaviour and education on these issues. All money raised through any charging needs to be transparently invested directly into the transport system so that we can see the purpose of the money which is raised in that way. We would support the creation of an integrated transport for Cambridge um, company um, so that the transport system is not dispersed in responsibility between different government agencies and private companies as at the moment, but is all in one easily controlled and transparent place. Cambridge needs to be treed and green place um, and we need to be hard on developers to encourage them to plant more trees and greenery. Um, to absorb pollution and improve the city and surrounding area. Um, we would support community initiatives like tree planting schemes um, and also uh, initiatives to help individuals buy electric vehicles and bikes through loans, for example. Um, there, needs to be a cred there need to be credible transport options for those who can't use buses, um, e.g. Uh, delivery p delivery. Um, people, tradespeople, disabled people, such like. Um, to wrap up, we would call on the board to make these changes and have some backbone because we can't afford to be indecisive or inactive on this issue. Um, and we really need, just need to act on what this assembly has concluded and respect um, all of our wills here from these last two weekends.
Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just in going halfway around the room, really impressed with the kind of clarity of messages that you're coming through. And on a Sunday afternoon to kind of bring that together, that is a massive feat. Kevin, where is it you? Yeah, it's, me. it's you. It's me. Um, OK, so our key message was that we want to become, we generally accept that we need to become less reliant on um, the private car. Um, because this expands the space available in the city centre for people of Cambridge to enjoy this place. Um, and we agree that a char or charging of some sort is a necessary evil um, because it moves, it creates space to reallocate for walking and cycling. Um, it moves us in the direction of a modern people centred city. Um, and we need to charge to, we accept that we need a charge to be able to do this to raise the, the revenue required. Um, key considerations that we thought of were to use green methods to close off roads to cars. For example, planters made from recycled plastic. Um, they could be temporary and moved for, for kind of trial periods. Um, consider the impact, positive and negative, on different property values. If, if roads are closed, will that increase or decrease property values? Um, we also it came out really strongly around the need to trial run this for a minimum of 12 months so we can flow through a year of all the, the different yearly activities and events that happen in, in that time. And we need to protect local businesses um, and, and essential workers. So that kind of thing came out really strongly. And then in terms of other important messages, um, we, we kind of thought about transport links first from a planning sense. So before any new development is approved, we need to, developers need to prove how this links to the public transport network. And if it doesn't adequately do so, then it's rejected. Um, we need to be bold and radical. Um, if we're not, kind of businesses will stop coming here. We'll, we'll kind of, because it will become such a polluted, congested, <coughs> horrible place to be. Um, and that's not good for, for, for citizens in the long term. Um, we also feel, because we've not been bold and radical in the past, that this is why we're in the situation that we're in, and we need to think about the long term going forward. GCP needs to think about the long term going forward. Um, we also were really clear about the need for ongoing transparency, and the public here and everything as this work moves forward, kind of works, works and all, not just the, the glossy brassoed version. Um, we want to be be up to date as we go forward um, and some sort of kind of yearly public audit or input into how plans are progressing. Um, and then the last point was just finding a way to try and remove all this work from kind of party politics because the kind of agreement was that this, this is more important than party politics. Um, so, so try and separate it and just get on with the job came through. Thank you, Kevin, and their table. Clive, is it you? Can I? Yeah. Okay, so uh, our group, um, so in terms of sort of justifying the, or explaining the thinking around the idea of prioritizing road closures and charging schemes, so we need a severe reduction in private cars in order to reduce pollution, and that needs to happen alongside an investment in public transport and alternative modes of transport. Um, so it's about creating space for public transport, but also about generating the funds for better public transport, etc. Um, a few uh, sort of other dimensions to this. This only works as part of a package. So these aren't individual um, measures, but they all need to operate as part of an integrated whole. So, for example, improvement measures need to come first before row closures and that would include public transport improvements. Um, a, a more specific point, but some people, we wanted to make as well, some people rejected the parking charges measure option because that was perceived as less fair, less equal. People can potentially buy their way out of, of that control. So there was a, an equity point, if you like, that we wanted just to make. Um, in terms of some of the key considerations, um, there was a number of considerations about public transport needs to be fully accessible. Um, don't forget people who can't cycle. Um, we had a conversation about um, uh, parking charges. If that's, it's, um, if that's a route that the GCP goes down, you need to be careful to consider the needs of small businesses. Um, for some people, it's a choice. For some people, it's a necessity to be able to park in the city centre. So the nuance and the different dimensions that need to be considered. 
Um, we'd like to recommend a transport for Cambridge or transport for Greater Cambridge, so a central coordinated approach to all of this, so an integrated approach. Um, and a number of other key messages that we want to get over was around improving, was, was having a sort of a more integrated approach at the park and ride schemes, um, and, a, uh, and in terms of, so mirroring, I guess, this idea of a transport for Cambridge, the charging scheme that the, the Assembly is recommending needs to be a Cambridge suitable charging scheme. It's not something that just to take off the shelf somewhere, but needs to work for the needs of Greater Cambridge. Uh, there's a few specifics, but they're captured, more, more specifics, but they're captured on the uh, post-its. Um, so a few other important messages for the board. Um, picking up another point that was made, picking up a point that was made earlier by another group, uh, this assembly hasn't addressed the bigger issues like growth, so the GCP needs to make sure it addresses all the challenges associated with the growth of the region. Um, just reiterating that need to move to a more integrated uh, approach, so more joined up thinking, and we, we put that in capitals because that's very uh, important, more joined up integrated thinking. Um, Cambridge and other areas need to lobby central government to do things better to support that joining up. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and just picking up that point, uh, just making the, the case with central government that, that the GCP area is a massive centre of growth for the whole of the UK um, and so GCP should be able to make the case to central government uh, that it's, it needs a sort of a, an ability to take an integrated approach to managing and planning all of its transport issues. I think that probably captures it. Thanks Clive, that's great. Um, so, uh, Diane's table. Jeannie. Stand next to it, if that's all right. Hi, everybody. So, um, many of our thoughts were very much along the same lines that you've already said, but um, our first consideration was reallocating road space. And what we really wanted to think about was the fact that our health is getting worse. We're not walking, we're not cycling, we're not moving, asthma is increasing, uh, all sorts of other allergies are getting worse. Uh, I even understand recently that they've just discovered that bike accidents, people being killed on bikes and injured on bikes, is actually going up. So we wanted to concentrate on making Cambridge a just a much safer, nicer, more pleasant place, where we took cars out of the equation as much as possible in various parts of the centre, setting up one-way schemes. So if you have to drive a little bit further, because you have to be forced around a one-way system to make a road one-way only instead of two-way, Regent Street was discussed quite a bit, um, and other parts of the city centre where if you have two-way traffic plus pedestrians and buses and bikes, it's a complete nightmare. If we can route the traffic in ways most of us will tolerate sitting in a car for maybe a couple of minutes or a few minutes longer, we're comfortable, we're dry, <laughs> we're listening to the radio. You know, we're not out in the elements, we're not on our feet. So if we have to drive a bit longer to get where we want to go, to give more space, to bikes and people and buses, then that's great. Let's do that. Let's sacrifice those few minutes of our lives <coughs> to get that to happen. So we thought, quick win. Um, if we can get some of these schemes, I understand your, we must pilot everything, we must trial everything, but sometimes the problems with small pilots is that they don't work like a big, bold scheme. And you've already all talked about big and bold being important. So the classic is you put seven bikes somewhere or seven spaces for bikes and then people rock up going, oh, there's a new thing, I can do this, I can do that. There's no bike or no space for their bike. And so they fail and the thing fails because people can't actually do what you've promised them they'll do because you haven't provided enough facility. So sometimes we're just gonna have to hit the ground running and go, we think this is the right thing to do Let's just make it at the capacity that we think it needs and tweak it a bit up or down if we think we've got it slightly wrong. And you're right, monitoring, feedback, absolutely key to the whole thing. <coughs> um, charges. Um, we thought we have to raise money. It's all right saying on all the fundraising bits, no change, no change, no change. 
We'd all vote for that. Somebody else can pay. <laughs> but we can't do that. We know that's not realistic. It's not going to happen. We're going to have to pay some more. And obviously, the key is fairness. So when we were talking about raising money, we endlessly discussed how to try and make it not impinge on the guys who are already struggling, already marginal, don't have enough resources already. So we worried about some of the um, things just hitting the, heart, the poorest hardest and trying to devise schemes that don't do that. So we're absolutely key that the public transport improvement has to go in first or side by side with anything that you do and your communications have got to be brilliant. There are problems already if you start talking about closing off bits of the centre that you've got a brilliant car park in Grand Arcade and nobody will be able to get to it because you've closed all the roads. So there are some obvious <coughs> downside considerations to some of the plans that you might want to put forward but you have to be holistic, you have to create spaces that people want to use, so pocket parks, tiny spaces, making the place just a much more pleasant place to be, to browse, to shop, to walk, to chat, to just make our lives more enjoyable. And if that can be done early enough in the stages, you hopefully will get people engaged in the process and wanting it to go further and faster and not dragging their feet and resisting every step of the way. We thought one of the communications aspects, we could use the steps idea. Steps is you know, very popular at the moment. Everyone talks about more steps, taking however many thousand steps we're supposed to take a day. So we thought we could combine the health thing of walking more, more steps, with steps to improving Cambridge and making it a better place to live and work. Um, obviously, we could throw this competition open to all the school kids in the area to come up with their own advertising campaign. We could do all sorts of public engagement exercises like we've done this. None of us had ever been to anything like this before and wouldn't have been able to describe how this worked to anyone until we'd taken part in it. So there can be new and innovative ways of talking to people and engaging people, and young people particularly can obviously be engaged very easily via a smartphone and an app. The rest of us maybe take a little longer to catch up on some of the things, but we'll get there in the end. One of the things we thought about charging and how we could tweak it, because we've said it's got to be fair and it's got to be able to be adjusted if it doesn't seem to be um, impinging on the right parts of the community in the right way, We've got to have a really good IT system. Now, I don't know if any of you in Cambridge know anybody who is really good at IT. <laughs> Maybe you do. So we thought that we could use things like the workplace levy. None of us were, it wasn't a huge success. It didn't get a great chunk of support, but it wasn't discounted out of hand. We had an idea in our group of maybe we could charge people for driving in and out of the science park, sort of like a workplace parking levy, but we could use the charging system to pick up that cash so that we have to find ways as we get growth and as we have companies who want to come here, because we've now got some magnets. We've got places like Microsoft and Arm or whatever they're called these days and all the other high-tech companies. Other high-tech companies will want to come and join them. We should use that. When people want to come here, we want them to engage with us and help us make Cambridge a much better, nicer, better moving place to work and live. <coughs> Our message is for the board. Businesses have to have a stake, have to be engaged and have to contribute. The GC GCP must report back to us. It was mentioned over here. We want an audit. We want an annual audit and report. We want to sit in a lecture theatre with some of us, if you want to carry on with this, with other people who are representative of the political, educational, university, community, whatever. We should have a board that has to report back to us to tell us after a year, after two years, after three years, after five years, how they've got on with measurable targets. Again, I don't know if any of you know any good researchers um, in this part of the world, but maybe we could have some evidence-based research as to how our ideas have got on in reality and see what's happening. Have another go at this. So this is not just a one-off exercise that's never mentioned again, disappears into a rabbit hole. 
we wanted incentives to get people to use some of the things, great ideas that we came up with. So we're thinking of nectar cards, points that you can spend to get free journeys or take free children. I did query the free children idea. They didn't seem free to me. They seemed incredibly expensive things. But um, we wanted all sorts of tiny little bits, you know, bike carriers on buses, cargo bikes able to travel around. We want mobility for uh, people who are disabled and challenged in mobility. We want all the little tweaks. We don't want you to just take the big picture and then forget all the little details because that will be important. But we figured that we had enough um, information going back to them from this exercise that if they can't make a silk purse out of this particular sow's ear, we should probably get rid of the lot of them and get somebody else in. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. So, um, so we set the assembly the, the question, or GCP set the assembly the question about how do we reduce congestion, improve air quality, and provide better public transport in Greater Cambridge. You have been committed, you've spent two weekends getting immersed in this stuff, and it was fantastic to hear all of that feedback, and I think you will have heard some common themes that came through from all of the tables um, as, as well. Um, so now we kind of have to hand this over to the politicians. So I just wanted to hand over to Aidan and uh, see, see what, what he's made of, uh, what he's heard. Thank you very much. Well, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to respond uh, in substance to everything you've, you've said, but it has been really fascinating. What I really want to say is, is how grateful we are um, for you to coming, for you coming together um, over the weekend in September and this weekend um, to, to discuss this. Sorry, I, 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 yes, I, I do, do not know. Um, <laughs> so I am on the Greater Cambridge Partnership Board. Um, I'm currently the chair. Um, so I'm a, I'm a South Cambridge uh, councillor, um, and I'm, I'm one of the Greater Cambridge Partnership Board. So yes, very good question. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, so uh, um, I, I, I've been here uh, a little bit for, for the first weekend and a little bit this weekend, um, and, and there has been an extraordinary buzz about the room, uh, a real um, uh, desire to, to get to grips with the, with the questions that, that um, we've set, the problems that we have, um, and, and work together to come up with, with answers. Um, and, and thank you so much for, for being part of that. Um, as I've said it, this is the first Citizens' Assembly in the UK to look at transport issues, um, and uh, this is the first Citizens' Assembly as part of the government's uh, Innovation in Democracy programme. Um, so you're, in many ways, breaking new ground and showing um, others what can happen uh, when people come together, uh, uh, groups from the, of the public, a mini public, can come together and discuss these, these big issues um, that, that we're all facing. Uh, when it comes to our daily lives, day-to-day -day lives, how we get around affects us all, um, our communities, our health, our environment. Um, ha so having heard the, the, the range of views and the evidence um, uh, over the last four days um, on congestion, air quality, public transport, um, you've seen for yourselves how challenging this is um, for, for, the, for the authorities um, and why Greater Cambridge Partnership wanted to hear from you, we wanted to, to explain the, discuss the problems with you and hear from you your, your views. Um, and see how you working together, discussing this together, can, would go about solving them. And I, I think uh, just in this session now, we've, re we've really heard that. You, because you have come up with some really clear recommendations, um, which is fantastic, showing us uh, ambition and a vision for the future, um, that, um, uh, and, and really clearly how you think this should be delivered. So I, um, along with the other members of the uh, Greater Cambridge Partnership Board, um, will be considering very carefully uh, what you've been saying uh, alongside um, some of the other evidence, um, the, some of the technical stuff, some of the financial stuff, um, uh, some of the um, feedback from the consultations that we've done over the next few months. Um, and we'll be we, um, uh, responding to, to what you've been uh, saying, uh, what you've said to us, um, and, and also then just making some decisions on, on what the next steps are. Um, these next steps are, are not going to be easy. These, this decision-making process is not going to be easy, but what, what you have done what, um, over the last four days will really help us um, uh, focus what we're, what we're focused on, those decision-making. Um, I would like to 
invite you um, in, in November, December, there were um, meetings of the Greater Cambridge Partnership Assembly, uh, which is an advisory body, and then the board in December. I would like to invite um, as many as possible, really, uh, to, to come along and, and present uh, to, to the whole board um, and in public uh, what you've been doing. I think that would be, that's really crucial, um, sort of actually in person presenting that, explaining what you've done, the process you've, you've got there, to, to, to emphasise to us um, uh, how seriously you've taken this and all the work that you've, been, you've put into this. Um, so I'd like to finish by just really saying how, how grateful we are. How, um, uh, thank you for, for all of this work that you've done, all the, the time you've put in through it, um, the, the, um, the, the, how seriously you've taken it. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this experience and I hope you'll tell your friends and family about the, um, uh, the experience. Um, and yes, I, I do um, look forward to seeing um, some of you at the um, board meeting in December and I would, be, would love to come back in a year's time and, and explain what we've done um, with, 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 your recommend, with your suggestions, your views uh, and your recommendations. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. So well done everyone. Uh, you've reached the end of the, uh, the sitting assembly and you have been absolutely uh, fantastic. You've come up with some fantastic ideas. You've come up with some really, really powerful messages, as we've, uh, we've heard this afternoon. Uh, you've kept us on our toes at times, but uh, we, we quite like that. We, <laughs> we like to be challenged, and you've, you've certainly been incredibly engaged the whole way through uh, the two weekends. Uh, so thank you very much for that, and uh, give yourself a kind of massive round of applause for all you've done over that time. Uh, so we've heard a bit already about what happens next, uh, just to, uh, to re-emphasise some of that, so uh, as quickly as possible, possibly tonight, maybe, um, maybe tomorrow, we'll be putting out a kind of headline um, kind of findings report or recommendations report, which will essentially be kind of the results from the votes um, that you've had, uh, but as quickly as possible after that, it probably will take us until maybe about kind of beginning of June, uh, sorry, beginning of November. <laughs> <laughs> Slip of the tongue, no. <laughs> Beginning of November, uh, we will pull together the full report, which will have all of the kind of the detailed um, kind of recommendations and all of the, the stuff that you've come up with over the, uh, over the two weekends. Um, so that, uh, that's all in the public uh, domain. As we've heard, there'll be those two opportunities to, uh, to present your, uh, your recommendations to, the, uh, to GCP directly. We've had people from GCP in the room today kind of already hearing some of that, so Aidan heard, uh, heard some of those recommendations. Um, we've also got kind of Rachel and Isabel and, uh, and Peter and others, but it'll be another opportunity for you to talk kind of directly to the board. Your facilitators, if you've not already kind of filled these out already, uh, there's a, a form where you can say whether you're kind of interested interested in being part of that, so ask your table facilitators uh, to hand that out to you. And then, um, and then as we've heard from, uh, from Aidan, the, the board will be responding to your, your recommendations um, as well. Um, so as we also heard, I mean this, uh, I guess in many ways you are kind of pioneers. This is kind of one of the first citizen assemblies to ever happen at kind of a local government uh, level. First one to happen on transport and the first one to happen as, the, as part of the uh, government's innovation in democracy programme. As part of that, we really want to learn um, about this and learn about your experience, kind of think about how we can improve things in the future. So we do have another evaluation form, I'm afraid, for you to fill out, but we would be really grateful if you could do that uh, before you leave. So ask your table facilitators to, to hand those round to you um, as well. Um, but the last thing I want to do is to say uh, a few thank yous uh, to people. So first set of thank yous have to go to our fantastic um, experts, and particularly our expert leads. So David, Lynn, and Peter, um, and Isabel, and, uh, and all of the other people who have come uh, at various times during the sitting assembly. So can we give them a big round of applause? <laughs> Next up is, of course, your fantastic phys facilitation team, so your table facilitators. <laughs> uh, the support team, so the green team uh, as well, for all that they've done to make sure things run smoothly. <laughs> 
Uh, two people I want to pick out by name because none of this would have happened without them uh, are Andreas and Suze. Uh, they have been <laughs> integral in making all this happen. And my last thank you goes out to all of you for all of the hard work you've put in. We've chucked so much information at you. You've dealt with it so well. You've come up with fantastic ideas. So thank you so much for, for everything you've done over the two weekends. And give yourselves another round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs>